Right. The President of Zambia. Oh, Mr. Yes. President, Mr. President. <laughs> oh, yeah, good thing, Mr. President. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Pleased to have you. Good job. Dr. Mabella. How are you doing? Good to see you. I think we have a. Oh, this is my chief of staff, Senator Baker. Oh, Mr. President, my name is Howard Baker. Welcome to our country. I'm good to. And uh, you and I will sit down here and <laughs> three waves of press <laughs> coming in, so we'll have to just kind of small talk. <laughs> I have ordered strict orders from my daughter to treat you very well. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you have quite a fan of supporters there. And very powerful again again. But sometimes it should be very kind of never admit to exchanging the view. Of course, and uh, uh, the reflection of the father. Thank you. The weather is good. The weather is good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we could turn it on. <laughs> We've been having some very bad weather. Really, really good. <laughs> In New York, there was a very heavy storm. Oh, mm -hmm. Night. Okay. During the day, all was clear. <laughs> okay. But the night before last, we had some storms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, Speaker Wright says it's illegal, sir, to uh, send military aid after a ceasefire. Did you uh, agree or disagree with him when he said that? We may have some differences, but I'm not uh, going to take any of your questions. Lights, please. Thank you. This way, please. What time do you think he might see Judge Port? This is good. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are pretending to behave well because they are in the White House. At home, they don't behave like that. <laughs> this way, come here. Come, 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 come. Thank you. 
present. I know we should be here. I know that there may be some differences between us on some subjects, but also I feel very strongly that we must work together for South Africa and with regard to Southern Africa. And I wondered just before we go in there, was there anything that you wanted to mention while we were here in private? Well, first of all, uh, Mr. President, allow me to. We are going to say hearty congratulations on the achievements that you and um, uh, General Secretary Gorbachev have achieved. I mentioned, of course, at the Assembly of the United Nations when I addressed them. It is an accomplishment, an achievement of a lifetime. <laughs> I'll go around here. Secretary of the Treasury, the one, you know, the one without the money. <laughs> uh, well, um, we're pleased to, to welcome you here, and incidentally, congratulations on your OAU presidency. Africa has chosen well, and uh, we want to work with you for peace and development in Africa and in the world. So. I know that, as I said in the other room, we may have some differences on some subjects, but also I think we have a great agreement on that and on working together. I uh, think probably you might have an agenda, and so I think it would be proper for me to defer to you if you have something you'd like to take up. Well, Mr. President, may I, first of all, on behalf of my delegation, for the wonderful reception accorded to us and the equally wonderful hospitality, which we really appreciate greatly. Uh, we pray that the good Lord God Almighty will continue to guide you um, in your onerous responsibilities.
ャツです。アンティーズレディカーたくさんいますね。Mr. President, it's been a real pleasure to welcome you once again to the White House and to the United States. President Kaunda is a senior and highly respected statesman of Africa and the world. As chairman of the Frontline States, his counsel is especially valuable as we work together for peace and economic development in Southern Africa. President Kaunda's recent election for a second term as chairman of the Organization of African Unity attest to the high esteem in which he's held throughout that vast continent. Our talks today cover the full range of international issues. We reaffirmed our shared determination to work for the earliest possible end of apartheid in South Africa and its replacement by a truly democratic government. The United States will continue to do everything in its power to bring about a negotiated settlement involving the independence of Namibia and the departure of all foreign forces from Angola. I told President Kaunda of my meetings this week with President Chisano and of our support for his efforts to work for peace in Mozambique. I expressed our appreciation for President Kaunda's efforts on behalf of peace in the Persian Gulf and North Africa and his support for efforts to achieve real arms reduction agreements between the United States and the Soviet Union. Today also, we reaffirm the long tradition of warm and productive relations between the United States and Zambia and the other states of Southern Africa in their efforts to expand trade, pursue economic reform, and develop their transportation networks. The United States has a stake in African economic progress. We've set a goal of ending the hunger that now plagues sub-Saharan Africa and to do this by the year 2000. Accomplishing this will require growth-oriented reform in Africa and assistance from the United States. We Americans are ready and willing to do our part, but setting things right will also require a commitment for tangible reform from African governments. We welcome the opportunity to join with you, President Kaunda, in helping to build a future of peace, prosperity, and freedom for Africa and for Zambia. It was a pleasure to have you as our guest We wish you a pleasant time in the, our country for the rest of your stay. Mr. President, may I once again thank you, your government and the people, for receiving my delegation and myself so well. I have found our discussions particularly useful. I'm taking back to Africa a message of hope and promise. I'm taking back to Africa a message of cooperation and not confrontation. I'm taking back to Africa a message of love based on truth, social justice, and fair play from this country. We have our differences of approach, but not differences of principle. This is important in itself. I can assure you, Mr. President, that when I report back to the summit of the OAU, November 30 and December 1, God willing, this year, it will be a message which will lend more to cooperation and not confrontation. Once again, Mr. President, thank you for the exchange of views which have been very, very fruitful indeed, and have helped me a lot to appreciate the stand taken by your country on many international issues. I can only end by saying I wish you God's blessings 
as you come to the end of the term of your very onerous job, I must once again emphasize our gratitude to you and General Secretary Gorbachev on the recently agreed uh, approach, new approach to the problems of nuclear weapons on this earth. Again, may God bless you and guide you. Thank you, Mr. President. President, 51 senators now oppose Judge Bork. He can't Please, make it. Bork. 51 senators have announced their opposition. Will you see him this afternoon, Mr. President? I'm sure. That's my Will you accept his decision, whatever it may be? You personally are not ready to give up, sir? Did the, did the White House mess up in campaigning for him? Did you do enough to campaign for him, sir? Certainly impossible for me to give up in the face of an issue. But did, did you work hard enough? Did your team work hard enough? <laughs> they're, they're blaming Howard Baker for this defeat on Capitol Hill, Mr. President. The of course not. It's, not. it's not Mr. Baker's fault? The conservatives say it is Mr. Baker's fault. Baker. I don't know what it's Order! Order! Thank you for having us here along with some of the We saw that in the committee here. I would like to call your attention to the fact that some of the same individuals who were participating in that had much the same attitude toward my nomination. Justice Rennie. 